back to another one of my videos. I've got an RT195 here. Uh, I've already done a review on this before, but it wasn't that good. So what I'm going to do today is discuss a few things uh, about the RT kit and basically information that's handy and useful. So let's go and have a look at it. Eh? Yes, we've opened up this BGM kit to have a quick look inside. I've done a review on one of these already. Um, they're a really nice piece of kit actually. Uh, but I thought I've got this opportunity to have a look at the piston. Whereas we've got an A piston, B piston, C piston and D piston available for this kit. So let's see what the difference is. And this is the A piston, as we can see it fits nicely into the bore, and this one, which I'm going to bring over now, is a C piston, and the C piston, aha, does not fit, so we have a size difference. So therefore, it's tolerance on their chrome bore, and they've got different size pistons. So let's have a look at the difference. So I'm going to do this in, in Imperial, even though they're metric, but because I like working in thousandths of an inch. So this is two, five, five. Four. And this one is... Oh, great. Shut up. Right. Two, five, five, six. So we're looking at two thousandths of an inch. So we've gone up two sizes. So that's each size is one thou. So we'd have to have the full range of pistons to confirm if that's the same on each size as it goes up. But looking at these two pistons between the A piston, then we've got a B, one thou more, C, one thou more, two thousandths of an inch. Okay, yeah. Uh, Here's basically the kit, what we've got here. Cylinder head, cylinder, gadget pin, head bolts, piston rings. Now, noting that our piston is matched to the barrel, it's an A, right? Which is the smallest one. The piston rings only come marked 65 mil. So it means it's the same piston rings for every size so therefore it's really important to check the ring gap on these and it gives you information in this booklet on how to do that so especially with the A piston which is the smallest that means it's the smallest tolerance on this bore that means there's a very good chance that the ring gap will be, will be tight on this so we're going to have a look at that at doing the ring gap now we'll have a look into our book shall we Okay, here's our book. We've got the introduction here. We open the first page and it shows you our barrel. And then it gives you a brief explanation of what tools you're going to need here, which is quite handy. It's quite a good little booklet. So, preparation tells you about cleanliness and blah, 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 what you need to do. And then it proceeds to uh, explain about stroke and conrod length and stuff and what difference it has on your port timings and what to do with uh, different shims and spacers like mainly most people are going to have the standard setup 58 107 mil rod where it shows you the uh, green line is bottom dead center where the piston now you always want to try and line up the piston with the bottom edge of your of your ports right because that's going to be mean the uh, the minimum timing to keep the timing low so it's maximum torque longer strokes as you can see he advises to run no base gasket and just put sealant 
to try and keep the ports as low as possible and then make up the difference on this is a 60 mil stroke one uh, to make the difference up with the gaskets on the spigot head you just lift the spigot head up so we've got this spigot head here you just put more gaskets on the top but try to keep the barrel as low as possible all right it's got other explanations for different combinations here 110 mil 60 mil with a same thing with the 107 mil rod there is to try and keep the ports as low as possible don't use the base gasket and use a thicker head gasket so there's a lot of these we'll go through and then it comes to a little explanation here on how to do your ring gap so it's simply put the rings into the bore push them down so they're square with the piston use the piston to push them in a little bit down about 10 15 mil and then put your feeler gauges in the gap each ring individually and check the gap and the gap needs to be between 10 and 15 thou or 0 0.25 to 0 0.4 millimeters on assembly so that's pretty good information I like that it's good then he's explaining later how to uh, what positions of studs to put in final assembly of the kit and then he proceeds on uh, ignition timing and setting that up very little handy booklet very good and then strobing timing 19 25 degrees okay um, good and it even this book even goes into carburation and carburation settings of how much fuel flow you have in different uh, throttle positions very good so yes I like the booklet that's really really good that's very handy even jetting changing jets this is the uh, PWK carb as we can see it's probably got it oh and then on the very back of it it gives you some gearbox tables which you can look through find your gearbox and then he's giving you uh, here options of sprockets what he advises to use or what this company advises to use for each bike so I would say heavier riders go for a lower ratio lighter riders can go for a slightly higher ratio so it's always dependent on uh, on the size of your rider especially nowadays some big lads about so uh yeah we're going to be running this on a 17 tooth because this is a an li 125 gearbox in here so we're going for 1746 on this one and uh that means new chain and new sprockets and a bit ah oh. yep okay so that's it and that's the end of the book brilliant Okay, so here's one of our rings. We're simply going to pop it into our bore. Thusly, and then we will slide it down with our piston. And then I've got my feeler gauges here with 10 thou or 0, 2, 5 in metric and we're just going to put it in the gap slide it in the gap and it just fits in nicely so that one looks to be okay with intolerance we'll check up to see what it actually is okay 11 thou no up again 12 thou ah yes so there we are that one's on 12 thousandth of an inch perfect so we're happy with that but just be careful when we slide this out 
So we don't want to score the ball. Right, then we'll do this one. So that was on 12th there. We'll try 12th there on this one and see what it's like. Oh, a tiny bit tight on that one, it is. 11th there. Yeah. So that one seems to be 11th though, and the other one 12th though. But they're both, they're both intolerance. We're not going to play with them because one thousandth of an inch is uh, near here nor there. When it comes to ring gap, it'll be fine. So that's it. Uh, we can now start assembling it. I hope you've enjoyed this video, that little explanation. Very important to check your ring gap and make sure it's within, within tolerance. Right, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, video. I'm not going to do the entire fitting of the cylinder kit because you can go and watch Kickback Garage for that because he did an excellent video on fitting this cylinder and I don't see any point in me doing it. But I just thought I'd go through a little, put a few points there uh, of the, about the instructions that it gives and that. It's quite interesting and uh, my opinion of the kit. Great kid. Well done, Mr. Cook.